Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I wanted to go into something a little deeper that I talked about with, on the show earlier, Timcast IRL with Ryan Hartwig, the episode where we had Ryan on to talk about his experience as a Facebook moderator. He actually blew the whistle with Project Veritas to expose some deeply seated and biased corruption at Facebook uh, with the moderation. Uh, and I know firsthand as a moderator with Minds for eight years what it's like to be a moderator and to have to make a lot of the decisions he had to make was pretty stark. It was pretty uh, gruesome, not to overuse that word, but it was pretty intense to hear his story. So I highly recommend, if you haven't seen the show yet, to go over there and check that out. And partway through the show, probably halfway through the show or a little bit later, uh, we, we started to get into this idea of direct democracy. Tim brought up, and one of the things we've been talking about was um, like the popularity contest of politics and how people like Alexandria Cortez and even Trump are getting into office because they're popular and not necessarily because populists, you know, they don't really necessarily know what they're doing. They're not necessarily wise or, or learned or anything like that, but they're just getting the votes and getting voted in. And it made me think like, that's a problem. It is a problem. And, but it also seems inevitable the way our system's set up, you get the most votes, you get in. And then he was like, we're, we're headed towards idiocracy. And I, the last thing I want to do is become a nihilist. And take that black pill. So I immediately started thinking about solutions while we were talking about it. And one of the things that got me to talk, thinking about was like a more of a direct. Well, at the time I called it a direct democracy, but what it really is is like a direct republic or more direct republic. And I'll show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. Basically, the way we have it set up with our republic is we vote, and I'll explain what this is to the to my left and your right on the screen. The uh, A, B, C, D, and E, et cetera, et cetera, F, G, H, are, just imagine that those are the Congress people that we vote in, and there's 430 of them. So any given bill that gets passed it to these people, they have to vote on, and each Congress person votes yes or no on the bill. So my idea on the show, and because the show is so fast-paced, a lot of times I don't have opportunities to flesh out my ideas. Tim's very good at keeping the momentum moving. So unless I'm laser focused and can coherently get an idea out, we pretty much move on. And sometimes it makes me look like we're, I'm holding the bag, like where'd everybody go? And I look like an adult, but you know, I just, I'm more than happy to bring up unfinished ideas. And, and every once in a while, it's like a hail Mary, maybe I'll land it on the show. Often I have to come back and think about what I talked about and whether or not it actually made sense. But I think this is what I was going for. So instead of of 740,000 people that Congressperson A is representing, voting A into office and letting A vote yes or no, the 740,000 people when this bill comes up can vote yes or no on that bill. And the majority of those 740,000 people will win the yes or the no vote for A. So there's st and each of these 740,000s roughly would vote and pass in a yes or no. So you'd still get 430 yeses and nos to be tallied. So this wouldn't be a direct democracy where the majority of the United States can like someone can make a, a viral blog and get everyone to go vote a certain way and and topple something. It's a local endeavor still and I think it would incite communication amongst like communities and, and really get people to talk. And one of the criticisms that I was getting on Twitter by the way, shout out to Anonimo on Twitter who encouraged me to make this video and reminded me, hey, I've got a YouTube channel. I should start using it. Um, it's way easier to, to kind of flesh out ideas in, in video than it is in text. And I'm sure you know that if you've made any kind of speaky talky. At least that's how I, I work. I do better with my with my voices my voices than my, my type, my typies. Um, one of the criticisms is that most people don't, or a lot of people don't vote even in, in general elections. So how many people do you think are going to vote on every bill that comes in? And yeah, maybe it's going to be a minority. Um, it could, you could have 10,000 people vote. You could have 50,000 people, 200,000 people of these 700,000. You might not have that many people vote, but even say, imagine 10,000 people vote on the bill. The majority takes a yes or a no for that, for that one, one 430th of the tally. And it's still going to be better in my opinion, 10,000 people voting than one, lone person that is could be very easily be a populist and very likely has been bribed by a lobbyist. And this is the biggest, one of the biggest problems. And, and it's almost like, I don't think getting money out of politics the way it's set up is, is even remotely possible because they will bri they bribe in secret. It's, it's, you can't 
stop someone from taking a congressperson out to lunch and paying for their lunch. That's a big way that they bribe, basically. Um, they fund their campaigns. Uh, you know, I don't even want to get into all the ways that someone could bribe or pass money into the pockets of someone in Congress or in politics. There's a lot, I would imagine. Uh, you know, I'm thinking book deals. I'm thinking... I know someone that can help you down the line when you get out of office. Goes on and on and on. I don't want to think about that stuff. It's much harder for someone to bribe 740,000 people than it is to bribe that one linchpin to get their vote, yes or no. It's exciting to think that we could actually change the, the world, the politics structure of the United States. We built the Constitution so that we can change it when the need arises. And with the new technology and the ability for us to use like a Reddit style bulletin board, an app, you could even have an app where like the bills will come up on your phone when they're ready to be read. And then you can swipe right or swipe left. It can be fun. You know, you can kind of gamify the system to make it exciting. I'm just kind of riffing right now. I don't, I was saying you could incentivize it. I was thinking you could incentivize it with a crypto, like a utility crypto that's not actually worth anything, but that could purchase you like a, a hat for your U.S. avatar, we could have like, you know, country avatars were like, hey, look how many gold chains my guy, gold medals my guy's got. See all the votes that I'm, I've done this year and I'm like on the leaderboard. Like I've voted 7,000 times and you can see me on the, so it could be, it could actually be fun, fun for kids, fun for us. It doesn't have to be, but you could opt into stuff like that or create stuff like that could being the, the, uh, the variable word there. Um, so there, there it is. It's just a simple idea I had on the show in the middle of it, and I wanted to flesh it out so that it's not left in the weeds. And if you have any ideas or thoughts about it, I'd be more than happy to hear it. I'm, as far as I know, I'm sure it's still unfinished. It's just a concept. But uh, Direct Republic. That's Bucko. Hello. I think Bucko wants out, so I'm going to hang up the phone, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button. Share this video with your friends if you like the idea and you want to spread the word. And I'll send you a link to the TimCast IRL show that I'm talking about in the description. Check it out. I love you all. Goodbye.